Hey everyone, it's Mark Sargent with another q and I'm sorry, Flat Earth Q&A emails part four, I believe, and hopefully this will get me somewhat caught up so that I don't have to keep doing so many of these every week. I think this is the fourth one I've done in the last eight days, maybe. Okay, let's get right to it. Let's crank through these, see how many we can do in an hour. This is one's from... Uh, Disco Dude, although I don't think that's his real name. Subject, My Flat Earth Story. Hi, Mark. Great work you're putting out there. Keep at it. You are really brave. I say that because I'm left with no friends and am on the verge of divorce. My friends think I'm a total nutter, and my wife considers me a big disappointment. She said she thought I was smarter than that. Coincidentally, Neither my wife nor friends have any science, physics, math, knowledge, or background or understanding. They rely on what they get told. My oldest daughter, 22, on the other hand, who does not have a scientific background and understanding, is with me on this. Anyway, my turnaround happened quite unexpectedly and almost instantaneously and my daughters too by the way it wasn't long ago when I heard my wife saying I'm open-minded but this flat earth stuff is just ridiculous and I'm not so open-minded that my brain falls out at that time I had barely caught whiff of the whole topic and kind of agreed with her then one early morning at sunrise I was sitting outside and something caught my attention I was sitting facing due south with the Sun just starting to rise to my left Looking above me and a little to the right, I noticed an airplane leaving a trail in the sky. I remember thinking, damn chemtrail or what? Went and made a cup of coffee and went back out. It was a still morning, no wind at all. At some point I looked up and expected the chemtrail to have been left behind due to the turning of the globe in the direction of the sun. I expected it to have moved further right from where it had been made. The shocker for me was that it had moved further to the left. In other words, it was moving faster than the spinning Earth. That started it for me. How can the atmosphere move ahead of the globe it surrounds? I thought about being, about there being current winds, up high, uh, currents or winds up high, like the jet stream. For sure, that's what he's talking about. But wouldn't the trail get dispersed? It was perfectly intact. There is no way the air is somehow velcroed to the spinning ball. It may get dragged along by the earth, especially the lower layers, but the air will drag behind the spin of the earth. There is no way it can move faster than the spinning earth. Fluid dynamics can prove this. Imagine a beach ball, and you somehow manage to get a layer of smoke to encircle it, as the atmosphere supposedly does to the globe. If you spin the beach ball in your mind, you can immediately see how that smoke is going to react and its relationship with the ball. And that's not what I saw in the sky on that fateful morning. Hope it makes sense the way I've tried to explain it. Perhaps you can share your thoughts on the above. It was downhill from there. Your airplane route stuff also helped me tremendously. Another great clue is the reflection of the moon and the sun on the water. When close to the horizon, the reflection is a perfect stripe all the way to the observer's feet. If there was the kind of curvature that they insist exists, those reflections would be nothing like we observe daily. This can be simulated in AutoCAD, but I don't have it. Maybe you could try doing it. One day I asked my wife, if you take a giant hole saw and you make an enormous hole in the globe in the Pacific Ocean, thousands of miles across, and then you remove that cutout plug and let the seawater fill that giant hole, what would that area that just filled in look like? She thought about it for a while and said, it would be flat. I asked her, are you saying that all the other water would be curved, but over that area, we just whole sawed it would be flat? She said, yes, of course. So I say, do you know that you just proved flat earth to yourself? But she didn't get it. We just had another fight. Be well, friend, Peter. Uh, thanks, Peter. I, hopefully nobody necessarily gets divorced over flat earth. Uh, your spouse should eventually just kind of adjust to the whole thing. Uh, hard to say though. I mean, with some people, you know, if you don't get it, you don't get it. And there could be a, a division there, a chasm, which, uh, you know, where there is no bridge for it's, it's possible, I suppose. So, um, hopefully you don't get divorced though. 
cross my fingers and hopefully your wife hopefully you can come up with some more arguments if you if you need more arguments show her some stuff from the um uh, the flatter shortlist playlist that i created with a whole bunch of different people's videos from youtube which you know gives and, and they're most of them are pretty short that should give her some different takes on it maybe honestly she's gonna have to watch some videos i know that you probably it's gonna be you know kind of twisting her arm to watch the videos but if worst comes to worst you know have her call me if you want, you know, if she's willing to, to talk to somebody, I'll, I'll do it on the phone or Skype or whatever. Anyway, uh, let's see. Garth writes, flat is real. Hi, Mark. I live in South Africa, south of Durban. I stumbled on your site recently and I saw what I had suspected for a long while. I took this photo from my bedroom window two years ago and started thinking then it was very unusual. Then I saw something similar on your site. Why are these crazies trying to lie to us when it becomes so obvious that NASA is fake? Moonwalk. Ha. So fake, even an uneducated person like me can see it's not real. Flatter the rules. Regards, Garth Walker. And what Garth sent was a, a wonderful picture of the sun rays coming through the clouds over the water, similar to what we've seen before, where the rays are, are bending in different directions, spread out from a central point, uh, which is above the clouds. And it was, it's, you know, it was a nice picture and just goes to show what we've all been you know, thinking for a while now, and that is the sun is much, much closer and much, much smaller, uh, which is how you get those rays. Marcus writes, Meteorites! Hi, Mark. Interesting view, flat. You say nothing about falling objects from the sky, meteors. Just curious. Have a good day. Oh, I'm sorry, Marius, not Marcus. Marius. Uh, yeah, in fact, that way, if I had to go back and do it in, in a time machine, do it over again, I would, when it came to the clues, I would do a clue or at least build in uh, the meteors part into the clue because I got that question literally since week one and I get that question at least once a week for the last 19 months at least so but to answer it once again when it comes to meteors the um, it, it, it's not done by us it's done by whoever built this place and by that either either mean the divine or whoever is the next level up maybe an advanced civilization and that is meteors are easy when it comes to the sky system I just add a piece of metal ore at speed railgun shallow trajectory uh, let the oxygen and nitrogen do its work and friction heats up and hopefully it detonates before it hits the ground and 99% of them do from what I can tell and that's it that's in try not to aim at main any major cities which is why that thing in russia a few years ago was got a little dicey i think somebody was asleep at the switch there i know it's a, kind of an old saying and asleep at the switch and it kind of dates me but look it up uh joseph writes subject flat earth go figure hi my name's joseph i'm from england in the uk i've just watched your video on youtube i thought it was well put together video i don't think you're just telling us what you believe but you're showing people there's another way of thinking i do believe in the flat earth i remember i was told in primary school by my teacher that when you put the earth on a globe map it doesn't fit i'll say that again it doesn't fit all caps and then my teacher told me they have to make the oceans bigger in order to make it fit on a globe. So my question was, and still is, how can the Earth be a globe when a map of the Earth doesn't fit on a globe? I am thinking, though, that maybe the firmament isn't a dome, but a kind of glass pyramid, while all the pyramids and occult symbols. Just a thought. But if this truth came out, then what other questions would be asked, like how can the sun be or the moon be millions of miles away when there are numerous videos out there which clearly show clouds behind yes that's right behind the Sun and moon but don't just look for the videos just look up and see for yourself that surely proves the Sun and the moon are here with us so who is the Sun and the moon are they one and the same and I'm going to stop there I'm a follower of the truth and the light that is our Lord Jesus Christ all caps forget everything you've been taught by this world you have only one father and he is in heaven you have only one teacher and he is the Christ oh, thank you David writes and by the way every once in a while if you hear me uh, like say something uh, the the wrong name it's because I, re I, I sometimes will look uh, when I get my emails when they come in from Comcast it'll say from 
you know, it'll it'll put in the, a name, but sometimes that name isn't being used. So whoever's writing the email is using somebody else's email account, it's a family account. So, but this one's from David, hopefully. Questions for you. Dear brother, I'm an evolutionary astrologer living in Sacramento, California, and I have some questions about our flat earth. I love what you're doing, spreading the truth and challenging the phony baloney nonsense that the establishment has been teaching as knowledge for centuries. I was never much of a science guy until I got into YouTube videos, but my three favorite presenters are Santos Bonacci, astrologer, Michael Tellinger, true human origins, human origins, and Eric Dubé. I believe strongly with Eric that the flat earth truth is the most important truth since it has the potential to completely upset and revolutionize the current belief system of everyone who is interested in knowing true knowledge. A flat earth belief system will change a lot of things about how we see ourselves and how we perceive reality and our shared home Gaia. As Robin Williams used to say back in the 70s, reality, what a concept. I recently listened to a radio interview that you gave titled The Globe Will Fall Before the Flat Earth Truth, otherwise known as Strange World 67, and I thought it to be very interesting, all the things you were saying. I'm still a little unclear about gravity, so here's my question. How do I explain the flat earth model to someone who asks about the gravitational pull of the moon on the oceans and the tides? Uh, he's got a couple questions, so let me answer that one first. Uh, the, the, the moon has nothing to do with with the gravitational pull on on the moons and the tide, or I'm sorry, on the oceans and the tides, it, it it doesn't. It's all done from below. Now it may sync up with the moon up above, but if the moon is only say thirty something miles across and not very high, and several thousand miles high, I mean, yeah, you could generate a massive electromagnetic field from the moon, but wow, that would disrupt a whole lot of stuff. Uh, you know, it would it would be it'd be awful. Plus, it'd be too easy to detect because people would be picking up electromagnetic waves from the moon and pointing at it all the time uh, and it'd be way way stronger than what they think they're seeing right now so it's done from below uh, the, the water system the tides are controlled from below to simulate the globe that we're on remember the whole point of this of, of everything you see you know the the Coriolis effect in the sky and the Sun and the moon rotating around and the star you know, all that stuff is done to simulate a globe system so that we do not look for the edge. The whole point is to keep humanity from not looking for the fence because different from any other animal out there, uh, we do not act like other, other animals. You know, you put a buffalo in a wildlife preserve that's only 100 miles square, they're perfectly happy. They could care less about the fence because they've got so much room to play with. You put a human being in that same 100 mile square area, all they're going to care about is that fence. They're going to care about who built it, how do I get out of it, why am I here, am I being punished, and a thousand other questions after that. So uh, when it comes to gravity and the moon, no, the, the moon has no no take on the tides whatsoever. And you, oh, by, by the way, also ask yourself, why doesn't the moon have um, an effect on, why don't the tides work on any lake, no matter what size? That's kind of interesting, don't you think? Any size? There's some big lakes out there. Or seas. Let's see, the second question is, how, and how is it possible for so many NASA personnel to keep this obvious hoax of space travel a secret? That's because most NASA personnel are absolutely legit. They're just wrench turners. Uh, I'd like to quote the um, uh, something I had said on, on an earlier show where one of my neighbors, uh, next, literally next door neighbor when I was in Boulder, Colorado, his name was Wayne Ottinger, O-T-T-I-N-G-E-R. And he was like the garage mechanic for Mercury and Gemini and Apollo. He, knew all, he still does. And, you know, he knows all of the astronauts, the Apollo astronauts, uh, the old school astronauts uh, by first name. His walls are just covered in plaques. He was a career JPL engineer, garage mechanic. He built the first prototype of the LEM, the, the lunar module. And he knew nothing. Absolutely nothing. Because why would you? You still need legitimate people to build a fake space program. You need them to build the rockets. You need them to build all the equipment. You need all the subcontractors. You need everything to get that rocket up in the air. Now, once that rocket gets up in the air, the people who control the trajectory, the, the people who control the data, those guys are in on it. But there are not very many of them. Very few, as a matter of fact. So, there you go.
It's it's not like in a, I've said this before. It's not like the Manhattan Project, where you have over a hundred thousand people trying to build an atomic weapon, and everybody knows that's what they're trying to build, and they keep that a secret. That was wartime. This is something where the 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 more compartmentalization, the better, and you don't need a lot of people to uh, to be in on this. You just need it's just the data guys. That's it. All right. Uh, let's see, as wise old Ben Franklin once remarked, three can keep a secret if two of them are dead. Yes, absolutely true. Uh, you also have to control the media on this, and you cannot let... A lot of people say, why hasn't anyone, any whistleblowers come forward? It's like, what, really? Who are they going to come to? If the media at this point is completely controlled by the powers that be, that and, and by that I mean anything that comes goes out in the Associated Press on the wire, and they have for years and years now, who are you going to go to? Uh, there was a line from a, a great Robert Redford movie uh, called Three Days of the Condor about a CIA office that was wiped out by another CIA office because they figured out another CIA secret they weren't supposed to figure out, and they, they killed them all, except for one guy, and it was Robert Redford, and he was running around the, the city trying to escape his own t his own CIA teams. Um, and when they got to him in the end, he said, look, I took, a, I, I took the, the story to the New York Times. Right? And this is in the 70s, mind you. And it was, the, the whole secret was about the Middle East and how we were going to, you know, disrupt the Middle East very, very soon, starting in the 80s, which is very funny. Seriously, I totally recommend Three Days of the Condor. Uh, but the, the CIA guy that he was talking to, his, his, who used to be boss, he goes, he goes, oh, really? You think you've got us? He goes, how do you know they'll print it? He goes, what do you mean? You know, he was talking about the New York Times. He goes, how do you know they'll print it? He goes, well, of course they'll print it. He goes, I gave it to him. It's like, really? How do you know? Which means that, you know, all you need, that even then, you know, they ha it doesn't take much to put a newspaper in your back pocket. So let's say you want to whistleblow on the whole NASA thing. What group, who do you go to? Do you go to your local news team? Do you go to a, a journalist friend of yours? Do you have a friend of the Washington Post and the New York Times or CNN or Fox News or NBC or, or Russia Today? Take your pick. I don't even know if you can go international with this. I don't know who you could go to. That's why the, the mainstream, if this thing breaks, it's going to be because I believe they want it to the story. They want the story to break. I think they've got it locked down tight enough to where, you know, someone coming forward from NASA is not going to be able to do it on their own. Yeah, I could, if someone from NASA came to me and I could run a YouTube video on it, you know, hopefully it has enough credibility to generate some waves and create some things. But I would imagine that anybody in the know Anybody who is high enough up to where they know the, the bigger secrets, you know, the, the NASA program is being faked, I would imagine they're all tapped. You know, they're all, you know, emails are being watched, phones are being bugged. They know where they are at all times. And they would, you know, they would know if, if they were getting a little iffy because nobody in that, in that position is just going to do it on a whim, I would think. They're going to consult with somebody else and that would be it, so... Anyone that's at risk, any anyone with the, that high-level secret, they're going to be watched. Anyway, I'm digressing. Uh, let's see. And being an astrologer, I'm curious how planets appear to go backwards sometimes, a.k.a. retrograde. Can you offer some answers to these questions? Uh, again, when it comes to this guy, anything is possible. No different... It's amazing how people will ask me one, one part of that question about the sky, but they won't look at anything else. They'll say, how does the blood moon happen? Because the blood moon can't happen if it's uh, if it's a flat Earth, and then how's the blood moon happen? Because there, that means there's no Earth between the sun and the moon, which means the the display system has to be artificial, which means the moon can display whatever it wants. And I say, forget about the blood moon. How do any of the crescent moons happen, or the new moons, or any waxing, waning, any of that stuff? That that can't happen. The same thing with the sky. Treat the sky like the inside of a planetarium. If someone wants to, if you're in a planetarium, you want to do something special for their birthday, if you want to spell out their name in stars, a planetarium can do that for you. If they want to put your girlfriend's face on the moon, a planetarium can do that for you, right? This is just another bigger version of that. That's it. So when it comes to the sky, I, I, it's amazing to me how people will completely discount the stuff on the ground. The stuff on the ground is the hard stuff. The, the jet stream and the underwater conveyor system and the magma system and the plate tectonics, all that, that's the hard stuff. The stuff in the sky, that's just a television set, for lack of a better term. That's the only, you know, it's what I'm going to relate it to. So, comes this guy, whatever you can think of, it's absolutely possible. Anyway, 
Uh, he says, anyway, thank you and merci, French, merci beaucoup for the time and effort you spend to get the truth, all caps, out to people everywhere. Keep talking. We're definitely listening. Sincerely yours, Dave Burren Bachelor. And he, he didn't spell it. It's spelled, well, it's not spelled like The Bachelor. I'm not going to spell it for you. Oh, uh, let's see. This one's titled Flat Earth Freedom with J-E, oh, I got to call her. You know what? I'm going to read it anyway. J.E. Prefer Platt. Prefer? Prefer Platt? It's, I think it's French. Hi, Mark. Uh, I thought I'd better send you an email copy of this as I had already sent one in your messages and you may have missed it. So here you have two copies just in case. You know what? I'm going to call it right after this thing. Uh, after I'm done with the show. Uh, Dear Mark Sargent, Robin Poe suggested you and see if you might be interested in helping us. The Flat Earth Community Christians out. My YouTube channel is J Prefer P E R P R E F E R E P L A T, which means, oh, I prefer it flat in French. Oh, that's cute. My channel is Flat Earth Freedom with J Prefer Platt. Here's the story. I've been watching, listening to the Flat Earth community for over a year now. And about four months ago, I began commenting. The story begins like this. I was a lukewarm Christian, really. So I'm watching Antonio and Nathan, and they are doing a show on religion, which would eventually culminate in an over-week-long rant against Christianity, Christians, and God himself. Hmm. I, I did not know this. I'm fairly well known about the hot, around the hot potatoes, especially now because I wrote two very long public letters comments condemning Antonio and Nathan for being so cruel to Christian flat earthers and letting them know that they are dividing the community. And I was really unhappy about that. I'm guessing you have heard about this already, but just in case, actually, I hadn't. Uh, what they did, it upset all of the Christians in the flat earth community. And even though I was lukewarm at the start, I had to choose sides. So it was Christianity even stronger than before. What they did was so was to severely damage the entire movement. Now there are many flat earthers who are feeling misplaced, like they no longer fit in with the flat earth community anymore. So when someone in the chat said, we need to start our own Christian channel where we belong, I stood up, stood up and say, okay, I will. I had already responded directly to Antonio and Nathan about how disappointed I was at the way they were bashing Christians and just laughing and spreading misinformation about us. I already appeared on one of their shows per their request. You can watch me try to stand uh, up for Christianity on Flat Earth, the never-ending legend, lunacy, and religion. I suppose they invited me on to be an example of what Christian lunatic sounds like, but I don't think they got what they had planned for. In case you want to watch some of these shows, here's the list. Their first show was Flat Earth, the never-ending legend, peer pressure and religion. The second show was Flat Earth, the never-ending legend, God bash. Third was Flat Earth, the never-ending legend, lunacy, and religion. And of course, they mimicked this same rhetoric on each of the three separate shows. They just couldn't stop, wouldn't stop. And the worst part of it was that everything they were saying about Christians, for an instance, forcing religion on everyone, and they were forcing their lack of religion on us. It was just crazy making. Okay, so basically, the whole that's the whole story. Uh, why ask you to be on my coming out show? Because you are friendly to Christians and because you believe that the elites are trying to hide God. You have said that you would support women flat earthers and I am a woman. Yeah, she's got me on all counts. Uh, when I realized the earth was flat, I thought, great. When people see it's a flat earth, they will believe in the Bible again. To my surprise, I was wrong. The flat earth community is filled to the rim with atheists, Luciferians, and Satanists. That's the real truth. So I want to place where Christians can go and feel free to be who they are. Where any flat earther can go and feel free from haters, no matter your religion or spirituality. So I created Flat Earth Freedom with J. Prefer Platt. And if I can get you to make a special guest star appearance on my show, it would get a lot of attention. Also, you can stay on as long as you wish and you could say what you already said many times before. They are hiding God from us and that the Flat Earth is generally a Christian idea. The Flat Earth is revealed in the Bible and anything else that would support us Christians. Robin Poe will be there representing the Catholic point of view and maybe a couple more guests on the panel. The Hangout will take place in a couple of weeks from now on a Saturday night, uh, either the 23rd or 30th of September. Uh, I'll call you in a few days. I just wanted to let you know in advance what was going on. Here's my telephone number. If you want to surprise me with a call, that would be cool. I'm located in California. And here's my Gmail account. Thank you very much for your consideration, Jay Preferful.
prefer that name's gonna drive me insane prefer plat j in addition in addition just an afterthought today i spoke with an old friend and this friend had been very supportive with all of my conspiracy research in the past so i was telling her about the flat earth i was thinking to myself this may be the first time that i don't have to sell her on the idea wow all caps does she really get it omg all caps there is always a first for everything then she says of course it seems flat and then what happens when they go out into space and turn around they take a picture of the earth and i say they don't because they can't get far enough out to take a picture all of those pictures are computer generated or painting and she just blew up what are you saying you've gone too far this time later i was thinking to my lonesome how much faith all caps it takes to be in our on, in the flat earth how much faith does it take for us all all caps to believe in the flat earth it can be a lonely place to be especially when your fellow flat earthers turn against you as flat earth believers we should be much more careful to be kind to one another that's what i want to say on the show we need to come to a flat earth understanding yeah yeah and uh i will call you so but yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to, to, to be on the show. I, you, you got me. It's like you asked all the right things. Okay, next up. Um, Flat Earth, the ultimate test to verify the azimuthal equidistant projection. My test is better than the laser tests and faraway island views. Here is no room to argue that the light bends with the Earth's gravity. So here we go. Let's fund a great, all caps, test together and do a little boat trip. Let's buy a powerful radio beacon and then buy a or build a custom-made radio receiver. That's a little taller there. Then calibrate that receiver specifically for our beacon that we have. Now electrically connect the output signals from this receiver to a controller that commands the steering of the boat. Don't pass over or plug it into the GPS or into the electronic compasses. Now we have a boat that can follow automatically a straight path towards this beacon. Set the beacon far enough away and go. Now going straight ahead in any westbound or eastbound direction, we'll be able to verify the compass angle to the north changing or not changing, as we now would not, all caps, be following the circular latitude around the pole. And we can verify what trajectory the GPS is drawing whilst moving on. Hmm. Maybe. Uh, it's It's got potential. I'm, I'm, maybe? I'm not sure yet. i got to think about that one some more. Uh, Gloria writes, Hey, literally the subject line, Hey, hey, who told you about this? How do you know that Babylon was technologically advanced? Uh, let's see. Um, only... What are you talking about? It has to be. If you're going to build a structure that big and you're going to reach towards the sky, it's got to be technologically advanced, and which means it's one of the older versions of this place. And God, if you believe you know the, the Bible, it's pretty much what's, what's written there. It's like it was an older ver version of our civilization. It was very powerful, very unified, and they figured out their goal was to, to reach the firmament with a structure and build a bridge basically to heaven. And it's kind of like a stairway to heaven. Ooh, Led Zeppelin reference. And uh, God shut it down. Does something clever? He turned, you know, he created a whole bunch of different languages and spread everybody out and took down the tower, and that was it. Uh, let's see. Where did you read all of this? Do you <laughs> I didn't read it anywhere. I just connected the dots. Um, next question. Do you like opera? Um, probably the oddest question I've gotten this year. I don't hate opera. Um, I don't know much about it though, to be honest. I don't, I don't know the language. If I'm not mistaken, a lot of opera is in uh, Italian, so I, I don't know uh, a ton of opera. I, the only, in fact, the only opera reference is I know that Emmy Rossum from uh, Shameless, who plays you know the the oldest sister in a in a white trash family in in Chicago, uh, that she's actually an opera singer. She's like a really unique actress, where, where she plays these horrible, downtrodden characters, but actually she rubs elbows with the opera crowd, uh, you know, uh, you know, kind of the high, you know, high and mucky muck crowd. So it's interesting. Plus, I mean, she's she looks like she's tiny. I don't know who knew she had that sort of voice. So anyway, look her up. Emmy, you're awesome. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, it shouldn't matter if I liked your video or not. It's very creative and inspiring. I was suggested this by asking to be a god. Gloria. I have no idea what that last sentence means. Don't know. 
Uh, anyway, Paul writes... Uh, PDF survival guide. Hi, Mark. I found your videos and haven't been able to stop research researching for myself. I love it. I was just watching the Flat Earth is Coming. Be ready. Strange World 70 and heard you talking about the PDF. I would love a copy. Fellow Flat Earther, Paul Attaway. Seriously, that's a great name. Attaway. Sort of like Attaboy. Uh, yeah, I made a free uh, survival guide for because I thought something was coming down the road. It was like a 100 pages PDF file. I used to have a website called urbansurvivalusa.com. And I let that go once I started doing the flat earth stuff. And, but I still have the PDF file, and it's just like two megs. So I'll, anyone wants it, all you have to do is send me an email and just put it in the subject line, uh, want survival guide or survival guide. You don't even have to put any text in if you don't want to, to say anything to me. Uh, just don't be mean. Because if you're mean, I probably won't. You know, I'd probably send it to you anyway, even if you're mean. Uh, let's see here. Subject line, shuttle. Hello, love your work. Under the dome. Changed my life and is now suggested viewing to all of my Christian church friends in Las Vegas. Wow. Thank you. Uh, long before I was aware of NASA's BS, but as a kid... Oh, I was aware of NASA's BS, but as a kid, I went to a shuttle launch. One thing I remember is how the whole town shook during liftoff. Wondering if anyone has an explanation or has addressed that yet. Uh, why there's a shaking? It's a big rocket, a lot of thrust. You know, you're, you're pushing a lot of thrust straight into the ground, so yeah, why wouldn't it rumble? Please keep up the good work. The world needs more people like you. One day, because of the people in your field, it might force these ruling assholes to tell the truth, or at least uh, part of, of the truth. Amen to you. What's his name? John. John Monero. Cool. Perry writes, Flat Earth Questions. Oh boy. I watched your Flat Earth video and am blown away at the possibilities. I was wondering about a couple things, not sure if you mentioned them or not. So much information. One, what about the Coriolis effect in the Southern Hemisphere compared to the Northern? Uh, see the planetarium description from the earlier email I read. And by that I mean if a planetarium is big enough uh, and you use some good enough software, you just instance the whole thing out to where what you see in the sky is based off of region. I mean, you could dig down to the individual person, but you can all you have to do is do it by region. So if you're in the outer marker, uh, you know, out, out towards the, the edge, you, uh, you're you going to see stars spin in the different direction. I know there's some people that say it's a perspective thing, and I'm going, that's fine. If it's a perspective thing, that it works out that way. I'm not going to lose any sleep out over it. But it's easy enough to do with technology now. I mean, we do that in simulations literally right now. Uh, two, I think it was Columbus who was to have watched ships sail over the, over the horizon, seeing the whole ship, and then just decreasing what he saw until all he could see was the top of the mast. He concluded the roundness of the Earth instead of flat. Uh-huh. Yeah, you could include all, all he wants. I am not challenging you or your view, just curious. Uh, Columbus and any of the old stuff really doesn't make a difference now. It's all the new detection technology, which make a difference to me. Uh, you, you want the, the biggest thing in flat Earth? See how many videos mention the P900 camera, uh, that cheap little camera that uh, generates... A huge amount of zoom to where a boat is you know leaves the horizon and you can't see it anymore with the naked eye and then you zoom in oh the boats there again you know now you can see the boat and it's because the boat never left it's just left your field of view the human eye can only see you know it goes out to a vanishing point at what three miles uh, you know just an average size object and now that you can bring boats, you know, you can you can now see them again. It just means you're, you're increasing your eyesight. So the question is, why, if it's on the other side of the hill, why can you see the boat? And people say, oh, it's a mirage, it's a mirage. No, no, it's not. It's a perfectly clear boat. And if it's a mirage, why does it, you know, if you don't zoom out, all, you zoom in all the way and it leaves again, and then you crank up the zoom and then it's there again, is that a mirage again? You know, did that mirage disappear? Yeah. Anyway, thanks. Keep the light burning, Perry Green. Thanks, Perry. Liz writes, hi, from an, from an appreciative YouTube watcher. Hi, my name is Liz. I live in Calgary, Canada, and I have found the Flat Earth information to be so very interesting. Basically, I am in. I believe it. Your presentation is excellent. I also have been watching information on the Mandela Effect and have found some interesting anomalies that might shed some more light on the Flat Earth thing. I have had the good fortune to 
been able to travel. Just so you know, when I read this stuff, if my English breaks, it is because I'm reading it as is. I do not correct this stuff for grammar or spelling. Uh, if you guys have heard this, uh, you've watched the previous ones, you know about some. I'm not f deliberately screwing up here. Uh, I've had the good fortune to been able to travel to South America. I've been in both Peru and Ecuador. When you look at where those countries are situated on the flat earth map and definitely the globe, their time zones do not correlate with where they're supposed to be. Both countries' time zone is, for me, would be like Manitoba time, and for you would be like North Dakota. And where they're sitting in the map, they are way east. They should be east coast time. I'm wondering if this is another thing to help prove the flat earth. It would seem then that the lines of longitude fan out more like pie lines, and the time zones in the southern hemisphere should be way wider. Maybe this accounts for that time zone anomaly, and maybe this is the same in Africa as well, but I have no idea. Also, when I was a kid in school, Ecuador was spelled with a Q. Hmm. And apparently people don't remember that, and I also totally remember South America being more directly south of North America. Now it's way over in the Atlantic. But that is not your field of research at the moment, although I'm sure you're looking at all kinds of things. Yes, it's true, I am, and I've heard a lot about the Mandela Effect, no question. It seems that there is a lot of common ground between a lot of these alternative theories. Thank you very much for your interesting video and the best of luck in finding out more information and uncovering the absolute truth. It may be that we are on the periphery of something the truth may be something else, but at least we're looking and that is a whole lot more than what most people are doing. Liz, thanks Liz. Brock writes, potential Jeffrey Grupp debate. Yeah, we'll see. Hey, Mark, not sure if you have come across the interview on YouTube featuring Dr. Jason Lissle, L-I-S-L-E, L -I -S -L -E, who claims to destroy the flat earth nonsense. Here is a link to the video. He is a Christian creationist with multiple degrees. I believe one is in astrophysics. Uh, here's an interesting response from someone calling Dr. Jason Lissle out for promoting creationism, but buying into every other area of mainstream science. Yeah. Can you please facilitate setting up a debate between Jeffrey Grupp and Dr. Jason Lissle? Would be interesting debate considering both of their backgrounds, educations, etc. Uh, thank you much. Much respect, Brock. And yeah, uh, Jason Lissle is a lost cause because I, I did look him up. And he is he's got a weird mix. I mean, honestly, I do not even know how he goes to sleep because he is a pastor with an astrophysics PhD, if I'm not mistaken. So he's taken as much schooling as you possibly can, as much indoctrination about the known universe as you can from mainstream science. So how does a pastor work his way around the universe thing? So it's like the Big Bang was real, but it was also created by God. I mean, how is he riding the line there? But he complete, but of course, because he's an astrophysicist, remember what I said, astrophysicists and astronomers, they're dead in the water. They, they're they the only two groups which really, well, that and, and um, uh, geodetic surveyors, they, there, there's nothing they can do. Their, their whole education uh, basis, the, everything they've done over the last however, however many years in their career is, is, is gone. It's blown away. There's nothing left. There's, they, they won't be able to recover from this. Honestly, they're going to, they're going to end up being hot dog vendors. I don't know what they're going to do. So having Jeffrey, I, yeah, I could try to have Jeffrey Grubb talks to him, but, uh, but what an astrophysicist is going to do, he's got too much space education, so much so that the only thing he's going to keep coming back to the same thing. Uh, kind of like, uh, what was that, uh, the Eberhardt show that I did? He's going to be like, yeah, but we've got pictures of, of Jupiter and its moons that NASA took. It's like, yeah, and? And, and it's like, yeah, but we saw Saturn. Yeah, and they're, all they're going to do is just keep mentioning photos and probes. They're just going to keep using NASA as a crutch. And the, the Flat Earthers come, you know, they're, they're not shy about going into it right off the bat and saying, look, NASA is a joke. It was it was created to hide this thing, it, which means NASA. You, you, the, you can't argue with somebody if their whole basis for their argument is the one group that you don't believe in, because they're just you know they're just going to keep going back to it. It'd be the most frustrating debate ever, which is why the Eberhardt thing was it was killing me because he kept saying, well you know I've seen I've seen the red spot on Jupiter. And it's like, 
and I don't believe that there is in space. If I say that I don't believe in space and you just keep coming back with, oh, what about this in space? And I go, I don't believe in space. Hey, about this in space? I don't believe in space. It just never ends. It's just this loop and it, the, there is no debate. It's just a, a pointless, uh, it's not even a conversation. It's just a pointless loop. So um, yeah, if somebody wants to set it up, someone wants to contact Jason on my behalf or Jeffrey's behalf, I'm sure Jeffrey would love to talk to him. But it would be, you know, considering both these guys have a lot of education between the two of them, I don't know where it's going to go. Uh, Jason's not going to, because Jason's going to lean on space and Jason's not going to be able to, here, here's why, here's the big reason why it wouldn't go anywhere. Jason is going to lean on NASA and he's not going to be able to address any of the questions that um, the ground questions or the near earth orbit questions or any of the anything down here like how, how would Jason say fine uh, like if I was debating Jason would be like okay tell me about the Van Allen radiation belts tell me what shielding we used tell me why we announced they were deadly and then all of a sudden they weren't deadly and how Apollo 8 through 17 uh, with the exception of 9 went round trips through the belts and nobody died nobody got radiation poisoning nobody got cancer uh, tell me tell me how they how they did it uh, there's, there's your first astrophysicist question right there. How do you do it? And he won't be able to answer it. He will not be able to, because nobody, nobody will. Nobody has. So he's stuck. Anyway, I'll, Jeffrey will debate him or I'll debate him if somebody wants to set it up. I don't care. It's going to be silly, but I'll do it. Jason writes, are you still active on this link? Give me my email address. Hey there, I love your vids. Just want to pick your brain... Uh, regarding God, the Flat Earth, Hollow Earth theories, I have a lot of considerations surrounding these topics and would love to hear your ideas and maybe shoot a few thoughts your way. Anyway, this was just really a message to ask if I should bother actually typing out what I want to ask, discuss, or if you've decided to hibernate this account. Peace, love, and truth. Uh, I should probably email that guy back. He emailed three days ago. Maybe I should say, hey, it is a real link. I love the fact that he he's like writing, you know, kind of like, People are leaving messages and stuff. I don't know if I'm even talking to anybody. I get messages like that all the time. Uh, Blake writes, I wonder about this and I am open-minded to the fact of this theory. Help me with why I still scratch my head and looking at the sun and the moon and that they are round. I know other stars are too far away to see anything spherical. I know people used to believe that it was flat and the moon was round then. I also wonder why the establishment wants to think us the world is round. If you wanted to control a population, would want them to think they would drop off if they moved away too far. Any thoughts on these issues? Thanks, Blake. And he says, P.S. You cannot climb the ladder of success with your hands in your pockets. Oh, good one. Uh, yeah, well, the sun and the moon being round, Jupiter and Mars are supposedly round. By round, I know you're meaning spherical. When you go into, you know, I'm going to use, I'm going to beat on this one so you guys get it. If you go into a planetarium and you look at the moon, does the moon look spherical in the planetarium? Yes, it does. Does that mean it's spherical? No, because you're in a planetarium. And then you, eventually you're going to have to get your head around the part where it's like you are in a bigger planetarium. You just don't know it. You just didn't, you don't know it. That's it. You're, you're told that there's spheres. Uh, the line, which I, I know will probably end up being a t-shirt, is that, uh, yeah, God made the sun and the moon, but it was NASA that told us the shape of them. Hmm? Uh, what was the other part they said here? Oh, why would the establishment want us to think the world is round? Because if we are in a dome, if we are in an enclosed system, that means there's a creator. And if there's a creator, it undermines your authority. You can't be the ultimate power. Can't be the ultimate government if you're not the ultimate government. You know what? If I mean, meaning if you don't have the power. Uh, if people know there's a creator, absolutely, there's going to be a lot of people that are willing to go against the power of the world. So, anyway, uh, let's see. Sean writes. Expedition. Hey, Mark, just a thought, but since there is such a following to Flat Earth, maybe we could march down to Antarctica and have a look-see. Can they stop a million strong? Actually, they could. Uh, be a hell of a protest, I would imagine. By the way, I enjoy the interviews you have done. I think it's genius to get experts in the respective fields to say, here's our proof. Sent from Sprint Samsung Galaxy S7. I love that, that those get tucked in every once in a while. 
Uh, yeah, nobody's going down to an Antarctica, man. They sealed that sucker off in 1959 with the Antarctic Treaty. No corporation gets to go down there and do work ever. It is locked down from all countries. It is defended. Nobody gets to do anything with the exception of if you want, again, if you want to spend the 10, 15 grand, you can go get your picture taken with some penguins. If you want to actually go to the South Pole marker, you can go, they will escort you there. And they will say, this is the South Pole marker. You can get a picture taken with it and you can leave. You know, one gets to run around on their own. You do not get to take a private plane and just start flying over the place. Try it one day. Have a friend with a Learjet fly and, and see how, uh, how quickly he disappears. Lenora writes, Resources. Hello, I'm grateful for your eye-opening information. Lately, other than Flat Earth, I've been looking into all that is coming to surface as well as what is right in plain view. Also, I have been a student of the Bible, more so in the last 10 years. I am using YouTube to get information on a lot of theories and conspiracies. I'm trying to find other resources, though. I feel a lot of what is out there is either redundant, has an ulterior, other than the pursuit of truth, motive attached. Can you recommend other videos and sites to help further my need to know and everything I should? Thank you for your time and hard work you put into the research involved. May Father God bless you and further your efforts to reveal truth. Warmest regards, Lenora. Uh, yeah. If you want to look at? You want to start with something? Go to uh, my channel. Go to playlists and look at the Flat Earth shortlist. There is a whole bunch of videos there. Most of them are not mine. Uh, from a lot of different people start looking into that and then if you want to look into other things other than flat earth uh, Just look at what's recommended to you on the right hand side And you'll find some good stuff there uh, Subject infinite plane flat earth mark I've been looking into this flat earth stuff since 2014 with curiosity at first But curiosity eventually turned into obsession and now I have no doubt that the earth is flat and that we are in a very well designed and closed system Whether it is a prison or not is certainly open to interpretation But it is an idea that I am leaning towards with every waking moment with that said What do you think is beyond the translucent dome? Is it another dimension? Yes, I do. I absolutely think it's another dimension. Or is it simply more land that is new people and cultures we have yet to meet? Well, I think there's that too, but eventually you get to another dimension. So outside this place, I, I do think there's, there's, there's other cultures. But is it... Uh, and then eventually you will get to another dimension. Let me try to modify that. Uh, many of the ancient civilizations claim that they received their knowledge from the Anunnaki, those who from heaven to earth came. If this is true, the Anunnaki are not aliens, but simply humanoids that exist on some land or continent beyond the dome. Yay, there you go. She's thinking. It is uncertain at this point if they are interdimensional entities, but there is certainly enough evidence to suggest that they did exist at one point. People need to understand that just because the Earth is an enclosed system, it does not mean that there aren't advanced humanoid civilizations that exist beyond the barrier. With that in mind, I am leaning towards the idea that our particular dome serves as a quarantine and we are all unwilling participants in a grand genetic experiment that has been going on since the dome was created. Hmm. It's not bad. I'm also leaning towards the notion that the Great Flood was allowed to happen because at some point the experiment went awry and a reset was necessary. If historical accounts are to be believed, the ancient Babylonian Sumerian kings reigned for over 22,000 years. Post-Diluvian records indicate that those same dynasties reigned for only 20 to 30 years on average after the flood. This tells me that humanity was wiped out for two reasons. One, we had vast longevity. And two, there was nothing but evil in the hearts of men. Perhaps our creators thought that it was best to shorten our lifespan significantly so that when we die and we get recycled onto this plane with no memory of lives prior, we are allowed to experience being both the perpetrator and the victim and eventually reaching inner enlightenment due to these experiences. Hey, pretty good. With extremely long lifespans, you're either one or the other, but never both. And thus... Cycles of despair would be endless. The Great Flood served as a reset switch and humanity was genetically downgraded. And for some reason, my intuition tells me that this isn't the first time this has happened. Ooh, your intuition is right. I won't lie to you, though. There is a lot of cognitive dissonance. Dissonance. I gotta remember, it's not dissidence, it's dissonance. 
going on, especially with me. For instant, instance, I also believe that this existence is a hologram and a simulation. There's a lot of evidence pointing to this, especially the double slit experiment. Yeah. Yeah, definitely true. Everyone should look into the double slit experiment. How this fits into the flat earth theory, I have yet to figure out, but as it currently stands, I believe in both theories and will continue to do so until one or the other are proven wrong, which doesn't appear to be happening anytime soon. Continue to fight the good fight. The world is awakening, finally. That's sign Kadamos, K-A-D-A-M-O-S-E. Don't know if that's a handle or a name. Uh, Leonardo writes, just to say hi, hi, I just saw your video about Flat Earth, great work, keep working, and a huge hug from Argentina. Sorry for my English. Really? I, that was perfect English, I thought. Ruth writes, Flat Earth video, good morning, Mr. Sergeant, I stumbled across your YouTube video and found it fascinating. Well produced and thought provoking, I've seen videos in the past and found them unconvincing and silly. I'm into your presentation about one hour now and just had a few questions. Really? You're going to write me questions after an hour. Should I finish this? Uh, that really made me think and, and wrap my head around just basics like the horizon, being at 35,000 feet in a plane and seeing the curvature of the earth or the same thing on a cruise ship with the ability to see maybe 15, 18 miles and the same horizon curve. Really? What is the answer for the simple question? Yeah. Okay. I'll give you it. And I'm not trying to be mean. Take a picture of said curve. Put it on your laptop, put a straight edge up to it. I don't care if it's a piece of paper or a ruler or whatever, and tell me if the curve is still there. You will not find it. You will not find it on the ground. You will not find it in an airplane. You will not find it in a weather balloon. Uh, you want to see the curve. Your conditioning is so thick that you want to see the curve. You will not see it. The only people that even show you pictures of curves is NASA. And to date, I think there's been only like 500 people that have ever claimed to even been in space and they're almost all military. Or the fact that the earth is round or flat. Why don't airline pilots question their flight paths? Why would they? They're, they're, they're there to do a job. In fact, I've interviewed several pilots and they are so distracted with everything else, they're not going to question anything. For instance, I'm sorry, I keep jumping back and forth between my comments and her email. On a flat earth, maintaining the same altitude should be a breeze with no adjustments necessary. On a round earth, wouldn't a pilot need to make constant adjustments to maintain his designated altitude or does an onboard computer make those? Excellent point. He should make constant uh, adjustments. The computer should do it. But what happens with planes that don't use it by computer? Like, I don't know, just about every Cessna uh, for uh, forever uh, or all the planes during World War II or even after World War II. You know, tell me what they used. And what happens if those things break? Does the pilot have to keep nosing down or they have to keep nosing up? Basic physics would say that a plane's propulsion would keep the plane in a constant climb, gaining altitude and negating gravity. Yes, absolutely right. Uh, wouldn't a pilot notice this simple fact? Yes, absolutely right. I guess my biggest question that you have may have for an answer for later in the video is why the ruse and deception? Who benefits? What is there to gain from this? And yes, I did talk about that in the later clues. All right, we got a few minutes left. I want to punch through this. Uh, anyway, thanks, Ruth. Uh, becoming a fan. Hello, Mark. I'm sure you're a rather busy man, so I'll do my best to keep this quick and concise. I've been into conspiracy subjects and doing my best to research and figure out the truth. In this land we call Earth for nearly 10 years now, I stumbled across your site during a slow day at work. I work in a cubicle and it sucks. Hmm. Needless to say, Flat Earth has never been something I took seriously, but something drew me to your page, and ever since I clicked on the first video, I didn't stop until the whole series had been absorbed. Continue doing what you've been doing. People like me exist that can't stand the boring drum of day-to-day -day life and are looking for something to open their eyes. You have helped me bring hope that maybe I'm not meant to be stuck doing what I do for a living now, that maybe I can do what I love and enjoy life. People like me exist, and we are listening. Don't fade into just another conspiracy guy. Change the world. Open more eyes. Thank you for your time, Josh. You know what? I don't think I can end on a better email than that. So see you guys next time.